Hello, welcome, welcome to the uh, Justice Producers Collaborative Cultivation Call. This is our third gathering, and we are so pleased to have you here. Our cultivation calls are open to all who self-identify as justice producers, and there will be a diversity of perspectives and practice. We're centering marginalized people and communities who do this work, not the people who are doing extractive work on our behalf. So this space is welcoming folks from marginalized communities. For these sessions, Calling Up Justice has been collaborating with the Curiosity Paradox to center justice producers who work in BIPOC, disabled, queer, and trans communities. We will begin with our land acknowledgement, and then we will transition directly into our introductions, where we'll share our name, we'll do a pronoun to interrupt gender bias, we will share a land acknowledgement to uh, do a decolonized beginning, um, we'll, we'll do an access check-in where we'll share anything the space needs to know to make sure the space is most accessible for us. And if the space is in accessible for us, we'll simply say all my access needs are met. Um, and that access chicken will interrupt ableism in the space. And then we're going to invite you to keep talking and we want you to share what your justice practice is. What do you do in the world? How does your justice practice manifest? Um, and also, how does your specific lived experience, your marginalized experience in the world, inform your expertise? Um, one of the arguments we have as cultural producers is um, um, uh, the folks from the community are often the best folks to advocate for our community. So we would love to know um, um, how, do, how does your lived experience inform your expertise? And then lastly, how do you want folks to connect with you and your work? Now, of course, we have been treating this, ex uh, this experience a little bit like um, organic gardening. And so this is an experience in wildflower seeds. So for our asynchronous audience that is viewing this in the future, um, please um, um, explore all of the beautiful human beings we are coming to know right now. We haven't done any special vetting process um, for any of our new friends. So please do your research to find the best partner to help you grow the specific type of justice you're trying to grow. We are so, so thrilled to be connecting with our community in this way. I would like to now invite us to share our land acknowledgement. And in the spirit of sharing power, I'm going to share my screen and invite all. Oh, I'm realizing though I've done a thing. Ah, so I'm, I'm having a moment, transparent uh, facilitation. I realized I'm about to share my screen, which might make the sign interpreter um, invisible. If I pin the sign interpreter when I share my screen, will that resolve that issue for me? I believe it will. Thank you. I saw Deanna nodding their head. So thank you. And I just saw Audrey do a hand signal that said, yes, you got this. All right, thank you, my colleagues. That those, those pieces of body language are incredibly useful and helpful for my understanding. I will now share screen so we can voice the land acknowledgement together. I invite you all to unmute yourselves and read a sentence with us. We'll just take a sentence at a time. Since our activities are shared digitally, let's take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within technological structures, including the equipment and high-speed internet, which are not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art we make leaves significant carbon footprints contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join us in acknowledging all this as well as our shared responsibility to make good of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation and decolonization. We also acknowledge that settler colonizers and slavers from Europe used stolen and enforced labor of African people to subsequently develop the land that was stolen. 
We honor the lives of all who endured and continue to endure in the face of settler colonialism and white supremacy. Thank you all so much for helping us to begin with that land acknowledgement. We now invite you to, oh, oh I should also um, um, uh, say for our access, we have two ASL interpreters, interpreters joining us today, Audrey Ramirez Loudenbeck and Sandy Pasquale. So um, please use this moment to find and pin their video if that is an access necessity for yourself. Um, and I will remember to unpin the video so that our recording will actually accurately have everyone's faces in it. All right, I've done that. Excellent. I now invite folks to uh, introduce themselves. So um, for introducing ourselves, um, I think we, we're not going to need to use the chat to stack people. Um, so um, the invitation is to share what I'm going to put in the chat right now which is our name, pronoun, land acknowledgement, access check-in, what is your justice practice, how does your marginalized experience inform your expertise, and how do you want folks to connect with you and your work? And I'm just gonna sit back and let whoever wants to go first, go first. Well, I know that I have been talking a lot, but I think that I will model to begin and uh, help us to get started. <sighs> I love doing this on a repeating basis. Every time I introduce myself, I get better at introducing myself. I get more confident about telling my story and saying with confidence what I do in the world. So this is a lovely exercise. My name is Claudia Alec. My gender pronouns are they, their, she, hers. You can use those interchangeably. I'm speaking to you from the land of the Ohlone people. The people are still alive. I also now always take this as a moment to acknowledge that I live in a country that has concentration camps. And I look forward to the day when I do not have to say that out loud when I introduce myself. I look forward to that. My access check-in is I have a muscle disorder and I'm having kind of a flare dare day to day. So that means um, I will possibly be pulling a face where I'm like, ah, and, but if I pull a stank face, if I'm like, mm, I'm not pulling a stank face, it's something you said, I'm pulling, um, I'm pulling a face because one of my muscles is pulling me. Um, other than that, I've got all of my beverages and all of my snacks and all of my access needs are met at this time. Hmm. How, what is my justice practice? My justice practice is investigatory. It is dramaturgical. It is deeply collaborative. It is both artistic but also it's incredibly administrative and logistical and it lives in, it lives in um, some national art practices and personal art practices, but it also lives in some more corporate spaces that don't label themselves or identify as art. But I feel like all the world's a stage and all of this performance is performance. So I, I use the metaphors and language and idea of that. My justice practice, um, it lives in the world in my writing, in like, um, like formal writing that's been published by other folks, like in magazine articles and stuff like that. It also um, lives in my Twitter feed and my social media practice. Um, and it lives in my consulting practice. Um, it lives in, it lives in um, the consulting practice where I am, giving digital producing consults to BIPOC and disabled folk for either free or, or a very, well, I work on a radical generosity model. Basically, folks get to pay me whatever they want. And when it comes to BIPOC and disabled folk, I'm like, I'm doing this because I want you to be thriving and succeeding in the world. So my justice practice is 
it's got an agenda. My justice practice has an agenda. My justice practice is also, um, it lives in multiple platforms. So it's all over the internet. Um, it has a lot of art in it though. So there's a lot of writing, there's a lot of poetry, there's a lot of performance. And um, hopefully I feel like there's also in my justice practice, there's a lot of joy and, um, and, and mutual aid and care. So the, so the spaces that I'm crafting to do the labor of justice producing, I'm hoping they are, well, not hoping, I'm designing it and experiencing it partially for my own survival on this planet. These spaces are generally rejuvenation spaces as well as building spaces and movement building spaces um, and income building spaces. And that is my justice practice. Um, and how does my marginalized experience inform my expertise? Well, y'all, um, I've been on this planet for uh, a, a longer time than this pretty face uh, generally lets folks know. Um, I've been here a minute. And I'm really grateful for having been raised in Montana. So I was raised in Montana by an immigrant father and a mother who was from Memphis, Tennessee. So she wasn't confused. She's like, oh, yeah, no, they murdered Martin Luther King. That's the country we live in. So she, she raised me. And it's funny, when I graduated and went, went off into the world, um, I was often in spaces that made me feel like perhaps I'd been given this sort of hype understanding of what the world was, a hyperbolic understanding of, where, of what type of um, oppression I was surviving through. Um, but as the years have passed, I've come to understand more deeply that the lessons that I was taught as a child those, um, those ways of knowing and seeing, they've always been true. And so that's a huge, that's a huge gift. It's a gift to be um, a disabled black queer woman. It's useful because it means in every single space, my eyes are wide open and I'm seeing what pieces of injustice are taking place in that space. Where, where is that space deciding to exercise hierarchical power? Um, where is that space leaning into some supremacy culture nonsense that isn't useful or helpful to the larger intersectionality uh, lens that I am using? I, I, I have an intersectionality lens and that's because of my lived experience in the world and the types of um, shared oppressions that, 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 uh, that, that, I, that I experience, but then I can also witness and view for others. So that, that marginalized experience informs my, my, my expertise in a deep way. I'll also say this, I was an able-bodied person advocating for disabled community for half of my career. It wasn't until I was in my, like my mid thirties, um, my late thirties that I became, that I had an acquired disability. And in that moment, that helped me to recognize in my past practice where there were places where I thought that I was doing so good for, for my community. And in fact, there were places where because of my able-bodied experience, there were things I just didn't see that I was completely unaware of. Um, so um, having a disabled experience that, that allows me to be, um, again, it's just, it, it's just giving me um, more, more accurate information to design and advocate around. Um, and how can folks connect to my work? Um, you know what? I didn't even put this down, but I'm going to put this down now. I'm going to put this in our interactive form right this minute, and I'm also going to put it in the chat. You should support me on Patreon. I have a Patreon account. I have a Patreon account, but I'll be honest, y'all. It hasn't, well, I've been updating it every week, but it's still backlogged because I've been producing so much work. So it's only caught up to like April, but it's amazing stuff. It's a lot of really great resources. And I offer all of my resources for free. So if you support me at all, no, actually, I offer it all for free and publicly. So you can just go to my Patreon and get that stuff and you don't actually have to give me any money. But if you'd like to support the practice, sponsor me for a dollar a month. Sponsor me for $25 a month. Go to patreon.com slash Claudia Alec. And I will now um, allow one of my other wonderful justice producers to um, say hi, hello, and introduce themselves to y'all. I'll go. I'm Grant. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, I am 
uh, teleporting in from uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, which is the colonized name for lands that were previously inhabited by the Chinook and Kalapu Tualatin Kalapuya people. Um, I am in a house that is in a neighborhood that was where uh, a lot of um, Jewish and Italian first-generation immigrants were displaced to in the 1950s. I also learned that there is a, actually, I want to make sure I have this information right. I believe that there is a, a plot of land uh, less than half a mile from me, which had like in, in legal code said that no um, Asian or black folks could be there unless they were working. Um, that's in Lads Edition, which is really close to where my house is. Of course, there were lots of other areas in Portland like that as well, as well as the state of Oregon, which was founded as a white utopia. Um, and um, I think I'll, I'll hold my land acknowledgement there for now. Um, what is my, oh, access check-in. Um, every time I do this, my heart starts to beat a little bit faster and my eyes start to get a little bit like dizzy and cross-eyed. And so um, I think colleagues, if I just start talking and it sounds like I'm just like really saying a lot of words, but um, I've kind of said enough, you could just like put your finger on your nose <laughs> or just like wave at me um, to like signal that like I've said enough, it's fine. Um, and I'm going to do my own practice to make sure I do that as well. Um, so, uh, and I think my access needs are otherwise met. Um, so, um, my justice practice is um, uh, connected to also, like Claudia, my own um, history in studying theater and performance. Um, and also my lived experience as a disabled person. Um, uh, Jonathan and I are colleagues through the Curiosity Paradox um, and the Justice Producers Collaborative is also a part of the justice practice that I'm currently inhabiting. Um, a lot of the work that we do is around uh, questioning how spaces are designed um, as sites of interrupting white supremacist culture. Um, and so um, we use tools like access check-ins, um, invite uh, the agenda for meetings, the ways that meetings are being held to be uh, up for negotiation and sites of power redistribution um, rather than things that uh, demand a certain model be the same model for every space and that expect everybody to um, basically conform to the uh, white labor ready norms that are set by most gathering spaces. Um, and so um, with the curiosity paradox, um, we have a coaching practice. Actually, I'll, I'll let Jonathan say a little bit more about that. But part of our justice practice is making sure that we are uh, involved in the communities of people we work with. And for example, we just put up a website a couple of days ago and are celebrating that. Um, and so um, part of our work is about um, uh, getting known and being uh, available to other people who are doing this work, either gatekeepers with institutions um, or other disabled artists and organizers. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's, that's, I think, what I'll say for now. Um, how does my marginalized experience, oh, I'm, I see that one of our interpreter screens turned on. I'm going to pause so that y'all can switch. Yeah, we'll go ahead and switch now. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Sandy. Um, so, um, oh, I've never shared this in this portion. How does your marginalized experience inform your expertise? Um, uh, in particularly as I was growing up in spaces where that were largely disa disabled centered spaces, the question um, would often come up of what's your disability? And um, right now, my answer tends to be that my disability is racial capitalism, um, which is speaking to this idea that disability is a um, 
a form of social barrier, a form of environmental barrier, attitudinal barrier, um, and that it resists the medical model that says, I have to give a diagnosis in order to be authenticated as a disabled person. And so um, as a marginalized, it, my, so my experience as a queer and non-binary and disabled person all deeply inform my practice. Um, and um, I think that as a white dis as a white disabled person who has raised upper middle class, I've also learned that um, I was raised in a culture of colorblind whiteness, which is particularly attributed to the culture of uh, like white liberal culture. And as a disabled person, I feel uniquely positioned to recognize the contradictions that exist within uh, constructs of whiteness as a disabled person. Um, and the ways that um, whiteness racializes disability in covert ways that I had to learn through my life experience over decades rather than through institutional learning spaces. Um, so if folks want to connect, go to www.thecuriosityparadox.com. Um, thank you, everyone. <laughs> This is Claudia doing another piece of just transparent facilitation and meaning making with y'all. I'm realizing this is like, this is something I'm working on in my own practice. I often will forget to add the visual description. I always forget to do it. I'm really working hard to make it a part of my regular routine. So I would like to do a visual description for myself, invite Grant to uh, do one, and then invite us all to add that to our introduction if that feels, I see head nods, I see folks giving me physical affirmation. Thank you so much. So um, I'm sitting here. I am, um, I've got a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on. Yes, I do. I've got a Black Lives Matter sign in the background. And I'm sitting in front of, I guess, like a green screen image of, um, a, of folks protesting for Black Lives Matter. This is a, this is an old photo from a Stephen Clark uh, uh, protest. And I am a Black woman with a uh, curly uh, black hair um, that's about shoulder length. And I'm wearing a very cute um, a sh a hat that was purchased in Oregon. Um, yay Northwest, yay Northwest artists. Um, um, that's just like a felt hat with a pink flower on it. And then I've got my pink arthritis gloves on. Um, and, uh, and then I've got some um, black biker gloves over that for even uh, extra additional protection and functionality and also cool cuteness. <laughs> All right, that is the end of my uh, visual description. And this is Grant again. Um, I am uh, white with, my, my skin looks particularly pink in this lighting right now. Um, and I have hair that looks a little bit unwashed, that's dark and not as curly as I uh, dream it to be sometimes. I'm wearing a light blue t-shirt with a pink triangle on it. And I'm against a background that is this like really bright blue and red pattern from the inside of a sweater that I love. Um, and um, I have uh, silver headphones over my ears and I have hands that drape like willow trees, which do appear every now and then, uh, check. Okay, I think I'll take a stab at it. <laughs> I, um, I did notice that we had forgotten to do um, visual descriptions, so I was just gonna insert it into the access check-in um, <laughs> and wanted to um, mention it, but I didn't know the best way without interrupting. Um, so my name is Deanna Yedalahi. My, no my pronouns are they, them. Um, as a land acknowledgement, I admit that um, I am not as prepared as I should be. However, I did find um, a list of um, indigenous communities that um, uh, are particularly um, um, within the land of the greater Los Angeles community, which um, it is not exactly 
where I reside. However, it's the closest that I could find. <laughs> um, so I still want to acknowledge that I am near that land, um, which includes uh, being the ancestral homeland of Tongva, Chamash, Tetavian, Kahuila, Chemehuevi, Pipa Aha Makab, Morongo, Pachanga, Soboba, and a couple other indigenous communities that I am sure I would botch pronunciation for and don't want to do that injustice. <laughs> um, as an access check-in, um, I share that um, being right next to my um, both emotional support and psychiatric service animal um, and having had coffee in addition to um, not as much sleep <laughs> as I should, um, that my access needs are otherwise met. My justice practice is... Deanna, I, I'm going to interrupt you to ask if you'll do a, a visual description as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, of course. And come on, I mentioned that <laughs> and then I didn't do it at that spot. This is um, why we practice it. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad that you mentioned it. Um, so I am a light brown person um, with big eyes and um, thick eyebrows. I have short curly hair. I am wearing a hat and against a plain wall and I'm wearing a dark gray t-shirt. Um, for my justice practice, I have historically done writing and presentations that have been on a voluntary basis, um, and mostly as a response to injustices that I have faced. So, um, historically within um, the spaces of the, in in the inaccessible institution in which I studied as an undergraduate student, um, by collaborating with faculty um, to get into spaces such as faculty development center, um, offering to speak as a disabled person and student experiencing inaccessibility and having um, become familiar with accessible practices, um, recommendations in line with universal design, um, and also engaging in conferences and other spaces to speak to other disabled people as an introductory to um, ideas of student rights in higher education um, for disabled people, as well as um, the way that disability services and institutions are now versus um, where I dream that they will become in um, moving towards disability justice as Sins and Ballad um, has created the framework to be. Um, so I, um, that, ties into my marginalized experience and how it informs my expertise being that um, similarly to my colleagues have um, expressed, my work is um, inspired by my personal lived experiences, a response to the oppressions I've experienced, but also a, a response to the oppressions that I have witnessed my peers experiencing as well. Um, I am a person with privileged identities as well as um, other historically marginalized identities, such as by being queer, um, non-conforming, a person of color and a disabled person, particularly with um, an unapparent mental health condition um, and form of disablement, typically in educational spaces. Um, and in ways that um, may manifest through behavior. So um, are more commonly associated with stigma um, and an understanding of 
or a misunderstanding of associated character flaw. I also um, hold privilege in being in Orange County, California, um, and that it is thought of as a more diverse geographical location, um, while also being a person who has always been in upper middle class. I um, also have always had access to education. And um, however, my ways of experiencing barriers have led me to feel misunderstood in those spaces where I feel that my grades um, have not always reflected my knowledge and experience and that my um, social engagements and um, lack of inclusion essentially um, also reflect um, aspects of my, uh, my lived experience that are not commonly um, understood, talked about, written about, and commonly stigmatized. So people can connect with me by emailing me at um, my first and last name at gmail.com, which is D-E-A-N-N-A -N -N for Deanna, Y-A-D-O-L-L-A-H-I for Yadalahi, or um, by accessing that long <laughs> email on my website, which has been shortened as a link and is bit.ly slash capital D dash capital Y dash capital S in scholarship. I hope that I will be able to continue practicing this so that it will be smoother next time and that I will <laughs> include information um, that is more um, representative um, and exclude information and stumbling uh, <laughs> in the future. Thanks, Deanna. Jonathan, would you care to go? I would care to go. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jonathan Paradox Lee. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. I am a pale, pale skinned white person with uh, some beautifully beautiful fake blonde hair right now and a, a knit hat. Um, I'm wearing uh, plastic black glasses. I have a a mustache with just a little bit of gray in it. Um, I am wearing a shirt with the photo of a very large sunflower um, with its its beautiful pattern of seeds um, in in uh, uh, kind of connected to our our wildflower seeds that we're casting today. Uh, and I'm uh, in front of a background of some some artwork. Uh, got it. There's a a nice painting of, of some uh, Shasta daisies. There's a, a, a um, I believe this is a, a giraffe and uh, some rusted paint. Um, my access needs today, um, I need to acknowledge that I, I'm feeling nervous um, speaking. Um, I have some water. Um, I think I have an access need to, to, to move in a way that I don't think one is supposed to do when they're in Zoom, so I'm going to do that. And uh, it's nice to see others um, doing that as well. This makes me feel some joy. Um, I'm, I'm punching the ceiling, um, and I'm going to make a, 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 a sort of like a, a noise that a, a cat-like creature might, might make. <laughs> Great. Uh, um, so what is my justice practice? Um, I, I also uh, was, uh, from what Claudia was saying, I also feel like um, part of my practice is continuing to consider what is art and um, in particularly to uh, resist the idea that some things are art and some things aren't art. 
Uh, and so just this, just us here to me feels like an artwork. Um, just uh, j the, that we could look at many different parts of this, but this, it's all it's all effing art. Um, that's part of my 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 justice practice. Um, and within the the particularly the work that Grant and I do there, uh, which is the curiosity paradox. There's this idea that questions, that when we, when we question things, we don't necessarily need an answer. And even more importantly, when we question things, we don't need one answer. Um, that many, that there's a multiplicity of answers when we ask questions. And that even when I say that, it's like, fuck yes. <laughs> that, that I don't need a specific answer, um, but what I do need is to question things. Uh, and so, you know, how, how is it that we do things? How is it that we gather? How is it that we get our needs met? How do we, how are we feeding ourselves? And um, how, are, how are we um, finding prosperity for ourselves and each other? And um, if, if there seems to be one answer to that question, that part of my justice practice is to, to say, well, why the, why the fuck not answer in a different way? Um, and apparently my justice practice today is to say the word fuck a few times. Um, uh, so how, how does your marginalized experience inform um, your expertise? Um, I am a neurodivergent, mad uh, person who only in the last four years I've been identifying as being disabled, but I realized that I've been disabled my whole life in terms of um, uh, wanting, wanting everything to be creative. And also in particular, I have relationships with people who aren't human. And, uh, and some of that looks like being in relationship with artistic ideas. Um, and uh, so being able to, to, to dance in, in between realities in a way that do doesn't necessarily come across when you meet me. Um, so being an, having an invisible disability, I guess, um, definitely uh, is, is a part of how, how I, I, I work in this world and how I, I bring justice to it. Um, Jonathan, I'm gonna pause you so our interpreters can switch. Thank you. This is fun. Um, Other ways that my marginalized, um, I am, I'm estranged from my family uh, officially now, um, but spent about 20 years in um, informal structures of estrangement. Um, so, so being part of uh, a white upper middle class family um, and choosing, choosing to uh, separate from them also definitely informs my practice. Um, we, we all we all need to find um, love in uh, in different ways, and um, and that there are, there are many different ways to create family, and there are many systems that we have not been taught that um, involve uh, very different ways of raising um, children, many different ways of of raising the children within us as well. Um, so um, how do I want folks to uh, connect? Um, the curiosityparadox.com for sure. Um, also, I make, I make music. If you look up um, Jonathan Paradox Lee on SoundCloud, um, you can see some of my music. Um, and I think I just, I, I'll end with a short phrase from one of my songs, which is, I am allowed to take space. I'm allowed to take space. And you're allowed to take space. We are taking up space. Thank you. Now at this time, I would like to invite 
only if you um, would like to, but our sign interpreters are just as producers as well. Now they of course are here because we have hired them to do labor to help make this space more accessible for our asynchronous audience. But I also wanted to make sure we had actually provided space and an opening if they would like to share their practice with our audience since they are just as producers as well. Would you like to uh, say hi, hello and introduce yourself? Sorry, it didn't seem to want to click. <laughs> um, so my name is Sandy Pasquale, and I am an American Sign Language interpreter. I am trilingual. My first language was Spanish, English being my second, ASL being my third. Um, I currently live in Portland, Oregon, but I am from Miami, Florida. Moved out here three years ago. And unfortunately, I don't know much about the land here, so I don't want to um, try to even pronounce um, some of the, the indigenous uh, names from here. Um, I do know where I used to live in Miami was um, Seminole and Miccosukee um, land. I know a lot more from there than from here. <laughs> and um, I've been a sign language interpreter about 19 years. I use pronouns uh, she, her, and I identify as a Hispanic or um, as a person of color. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to move my screen all around because I have like I'm reading the script along with the video and I had to like ah, move all the stuff. Um, hi, <laughs> my name is Audrey Ramirez Laudenbach. Um, I am yeah, a sign language interpreter. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Land acknowledgement. I am in Salem, Oregon, um, which I know Chamawa tribal land is close to here. Um, as well as Chinook and Grand Ron is just to the west of us as well, but um, I'm sure I'll, <laughs> I'm sure it, it involves multiple lands in Salem as well, their um, inhabitants. And also I think with technology, um, I'm always trying to be aware of um, the privilege that I hold with the technological access I have and that I work with many people um, that do not have uh, high speed internet, do not have the ability to connect to their education right now, do not have the ability to communicate very well right now um, on a lot of levels. And so uh, this, the technology and the access to that is a, is a big thought of, in just a big part of my process for communication because now so much sign communication is through video relay at this point. And so the impact that that has on um, deaf and hard of hearing folks that don't have adequate or equitable access to um, internet services is significant. Um, what is my justice practice? So uh, I have a background in multicultural education, um, specifically in higher education. And so uh, I always try to bring that lens to my work, um, working with marginalized communities and marginalized in their language use and marginalized in um, their ethnic and racial identities are probably two of my main areas of expertise um, that I have a lot of work with um, people with native Spanish speakers and ASL um, as a Chicana, as someone who identifies as Chicana, meaning um, my ethnic heritage is from Mexico. Um, and recognizing that deep colonization that's happened um, with Mexican Americans through my own family in which um, their native language and their native land was really taken from them. So that's a big part of my work. It's a big part of why I do this work is because um, linguistic equity is really important to me and I feel like I've inherited some of that colonization and would like to work against it. Um, 
how do I want folks to connect with me and my work? Um, I think my work as an interpreter is mostly about connecting other people. Um, so if you see me and I'm working, feel free to connect with the, um, the communities that are in that space. And I just like, I enjoy my, my role is to be a part of that connection and to facilitate that connection as much as possible. Um, so oftentimes when people see a sign language interpreter working, they get really interested and want to check it out and want to talk to me about my work. But I encourage you, if you feel that, um, to maybe misdirect that, the, that curiosity and that wanting to engage um, with the deaf and hard of hearing folks in that space and see um, what their language is about. Um, talk to them about what you see or what questions you have and the interpreter is there to facilitate that and to make that accessible. So I think that's it for me. I'll go back to interpreting now. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being able to um, um, introduce your practice and yourselves. Um, I'm totally honored and I'm so happy that we had room to integrate that into our session today. That's amazing. All right, so um, I'm actually going to the script to make sure I am not skipping a section that we should be doing at this point. Nope. No. Oh, go ahead. This is Deanna. Um, I wanted to um, ask what you thought about as an access practice, um, the opportunity to add or edit, edit anything that we've said verbally. I love that. Yes. So now we will be formally doing the thing that um, we've just added to the script, which was <laughs> such a good idea, which is a chance for us to um, uh, again, we, this is our this is the piece of our practice that we are recording to share with the community. So this is our chance to um, add anything else we would like to to our story, to our introduction. Um, and I know that uh, we were able to hire or arrange for Audrey and Sandy to be here to increase our access practice. So possibly that's the link that we might share with the public. Um, um, but this is a chance for folks to, to just do any go backs and then I will share screen, share those website contacts, and then we'll end the recording. So actually, I forgot to do a visual description. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so um, I am a um, light brown skinned female, curly, um, mid length brown hair, uh, wearing a black shirt, and uh, my background is blue. Thank you. Audrey, I forgot the same. Thank you, Sandy, for the reminder. Um, uh, I am a um, Latina woman with I don't know, medium brown skin. I don't know how to, I always have a trouble time, hard time describing skin color accurately because it really depends on your perspective of what you consider, yeah, anyways. Um, so I have dark, dark brown, almost black hair, um, brown eyes, glasses. My hair is like chin length. Oh, can you interpret this, Sandy? You got it, okay, sorry. <laughs> and then a brown jacket, a blue shirt, and a blue background and some light coming in from the front of me. Apologize for that. <laughs> uh, and, and then I'll add, cause I, um, I forgot a land acknowledgement. Um, I, I also um, live in the, 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 col the land, the colonized name of, of Portland, um, particularly where we are is um, Cowlitz and uh, Clackamas. Uh, as well as other unnamed um, tribes, the the um, uh, the the ancestral lands of um, those people, and just want to acknowledge um, the 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 centuries of um, of tending um, to that land, and and acknowledge that those people are still alive, um, and that they will continue to um, tend uh, this land and protect the water of this land. Um, and then also, I forgot to say that I'm a writer. Um, <laughs> that um, I I write words, and um, I I one of the um, uh, deep relationships I have is with the the people who who are words, um, and so uh, that is one of the things that I can help with is is um, 
creating using words as a bridge uh, a bridge for people um, that that um, instead of uh, considering there to be a scarcity that there's actually um, there there is justice enough justice to go around and words are one of those ways check I am also going to take this wonderful moment. Thank you, Deanna. Uh, I'm going to take this moment to um, acknowledge that prior to recording, um, we had an exchange with our sign interpreters to figure out what the logistics of inviting them into fully participating in the space. So this is me doing just, again, a little piece of transparent facilitation, but also modeling for our community. When you um, when you're collaborating with um, your justice producers that are interpreters and um, and you don't actively have deaf community in the space in the room, that's one type of uh, performative frame you're creating. Um, if we had had deaf uh, folk in the space, we possibly would have made some alternate choices or managed the space differently. Um, but there definitely was some conversation, some some actual conversation that took place to make sure we handled that moment. Um, with grace and um, an accessibility for everyone. And um, just big gigantic shout out though, for our two interpreters being able to wear multiple hats and participate and sign for each other. Um, that was uh, really magnificent to witness, check. This is Deanna. Um, I wanted to add um, and adjust a few things that I've said. So um, within um, sharing my privileges, I um, misspoke by saying that I was in a geographical location that is diverse, that was um, too broad and confusing. Um, what I should have said instead is much like Grant beautifully articulated. I feel that I was raised in a space that um, accepts um, and is, you know, kind of masked by um, colorblindness, wherein we neglect to um, acknowledge and consider the injustices of um, people with marginalized, you know, colors and um, races or ethnicities. Um, because we feel that we are superior to places where um, racism may be more covert, which still happens in our geographical spaces as well. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to edit that for sure, um, because I felt that it was um, a misrepresentation of what I meant. Um, I also wanted to add that I started describing my justice practice by saying what I've historically done, but I didn't actually say what I'm dreaming to do, um, which is to um, transition to um, opening up the opportunity for individuals to reach out to me, um, to uh, just share resources or talk about um, you know, the different disabled people that I really want to um, center, such as their um, blog spaces, their social medias, and things like that, as well as doing more writing um, in order to bring awareness to um, the oppressions that I have experienced, as well as um, those of my peers that I have ex um, witnessed. Um, and also, to um, offer presentations um, to continue to educate my fellow disabled people um, as a response to a way in which I um, felt that I um, had a lack of access to education about disability rights. And um, in response to that, you know, lost a job because I didn't know accommodations were a thing. Um, so that's just one example, but you know, not being identified in high school, meaning that I was having detentions every day for being tardy when being tardy was actually a result of my um, neurodivergence or madness. Um, and that's really what I was trying to allude to when I was talking very broadly and probably confusingly about um, the ways in which not just um, educational spaces are inaccessible to me in ways that are less maybe apparent, um, such as 
you know, for example, physical accessibility, but instead um, of common practices and policies and even social policies and norms being inaccessible to me um, and ha having a lack of access in ways that um, fit within those, you know, um, in a way that I don't fit in with the systems and structures that were um, socially constructed. Um, wow, even, even just saying that, I feel like I could have said that better. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, you know, you might notice that um, part of my neurodivergence is trouble with collecting my thoughts and um, articulating them in ways that I wish. And often um, this leads to social misunderstandings for me um, because I say things differently than I intend them. Um, so that is especially why I appreciate um, spaces like these, which um, welcome additions to accessibility practices um, such as uh, the ability to edit um, what I've verbally said. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna take a second to think if there's anything else I really, really want to highlight. Um, uh, maybe that my um, experiences have also been informed through um, my parents being um, people, immigrants, uh, my mom from Mexico, my dad from Iran, um, and that they, you know, um, married, their marriage was a form of um, resistance as well, in that they um, are, uh, you know, a, a mixed race couple, um, as well as having lived um, or been brought up through different religions, different cultures, and cultures, um, at least for my father, uh, where it is typical that you marry within the culture and even in a specific way, um, such as uh, through arranged marriage. So I also acknowledge my privilege in being brought up in California, where the social um, and cultural uh, practices allow me to, to be more free in my choices um, as well. I feel so honored and lucky to be in this space. Um, so I'm just going to take a moment to uh, say, just to, just to have a moment of gratitude for Jonathan for bringing some movement into the space. I needed to move my body. Uh, sitting in front of a Zoom screen, um, I will forget, I'll get frozen, I'll allow my body to lock into spaces that are unhealthy. So thank you for inviting that. Uh, oftentimes our formal meeting culture wants us to hold our bodies in ways that are unhealthy. So thank you for reminding us that our justice practice is one where we can participate with our bodies in this space and the ways that are healthiest for our bodies. Deanna, I want to thank you for um, uh, uh, bringing into the space um, the uh, just, just reiterating in the space that access is an ongoing negotiation. And um, as with our practice with calling up justice, with these um, cultivation calls, that this is a, um, this is a practice of repetition of returning again and again um, to, to create justice for ourselves and to learn from each other's practice. I feel like my own personal practice has been deeply enriched by this exchange. And y'all are so smart. And, and I, this was just really lovely. So let's blow up y'all's spot. I'm about to share my screen and brag on you. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Can we get one minute to switch interpreters before again, oh, make sure yes. Yes. that's pinned? Also, Thank you. You are reminding me to pin the correct interpreter. So please switch. And then if you could verbally tell me who. Yes. Uh, uh, Sandy is taking over right now. Thank I will you. pin that video right now. Thank you so much, Sandy. No so we are now sharing our screen. We are sharing the screen to promote the justice practice. So there's Jonathan uh, Lee, Paradox Lee SoundCloud. There's the, para uh, the Curiosity Paradox. You can find out all about 
and then find out how to work with them. Here is this excellent, beautiful website. With the, when I put the bit.ly address in, it came out as this gorgeous, long, beautiful text. So thank you for that bit.ly uh, thing. But this is how you can contact uh, Deanna to do this beautiful work. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so great. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, I could have... Yeah, I wanted to add that much like you shared, Claudia, um, I make fully uh, um, available my presentation materials as they have also evolved and gotten better. So even from uh, what I used to advocate for at the beginning is different than what I advocate for now. Um, and then at the end are resources um, such as pointing to other people, other works, um, and learning more about um, other issues that disabled people uh, try to bring oh, awareness. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're pretty awesome, and I wanted to ask for your permission, but I figured since it's publicly available, hopefully that just assumes that it's okay. Yes. Oh, this is so marvelous. Oh, y'all, I am deeply excited about your site. This is really great. All right, y'all. Well, here are all of the different places where you can connect to this work. Thank you so much for joining us for our Justice Producers Cultivation Call. I will hit stop on the recording now. And now we get to have our own private conversation that y'all don't get to listen to. So goodbye.